We're diving deep today into a truth that not many talk about. The signs of greatness, the signs that only the most powerful chosen ones carry, are not what you might expect. It's not the easy road, the glitz, or the glamour that reveals a chosen one's true power. No, it's often the exact opposite. And if you're watching this, chances are you've seen or felt these signs in your life but maybe you haven't fully understood what they mean yet. So today I want to take you on a journey to help you recognize and embrace these signs and to understand why they're reserved for only the most powerful chosen ones. When we talk about chosen ones, it's not about being better than anyone else or having some sort of magical, exclusive access to divine favor. It's about responsibility. It's about carrying a burden that others may never fully understand. And that burden often shows up in ways that are deeply uncomfortable. That's the first sign we need to talk about the discomfort. You might feel like you've never really fit in. Whether it's with your family, your peers, or society at large, you may have always had this sense that you were different, that you saw the world in a way that others couldn't. That's not a coincidence. That's a sign. But let me ask you this. Have you ever wondered why you feel this way? Why the world around you seems out of sync with your inner knowing? It's because the path of a chosen one is never about blending in. It's about standing out and not in the ways that make you the most popular or the most liked. It's about standing out in ways that challenge the status quo. This is why, if you've noticed, the world might often push back against you, resist your energy, or even seem hostile at times. That resistance is a sign. It's a confirmation that you're on the right path, even when it feels like everything is working against you. Click subscribe to this channel to get more profound spiritual lesson. Now that resistance brings us to the second sign, isolation. The most powerful chosen ones often go through long periods of isolation. And I don't just mean physical isolation, but emotional and spiritual isolation as well. Have you ever felt alone, even in a room full of people? That's because your path requires solitude. Not everyone is meant to walk with you on this journey and that can be incredibly painful to realize. You may lose friendships, relationships, even family connections as you step more fully into your purpose. But this isolation isn't meant to break you, it's meant to strengthen you. Think about it, diamonds are formed under pressure and the most powerful souls are forged in solitude. It's in those moments when you're alone when there's no one to turn to, that you are forced to dig deep into yourself and tap into the divine power that's been placed within you. That's where you grow. That's where you evolve. And it's that very solitude that separates the chosen ones from the rest. While others may look outside of themselves for validation, you are being called to look within. And that is where your true power lies. But here's the thing about isolation, it can make you doubt yourself. It can make you question whether you're really on the right path. You might ask, why me? Why am I going through this when others seem to have it so much easier? But here's a truth that will set you free. The chosen path is not for the faint of heart. You are being prepared for something far greater than you can imagine. And that preparation requires you to go through things that others will never have to face. And when you embrace that, when you stop seeing your isolation as a curse and start seeing it as the divine training ground that it is, everything changes. Now, let's talk about the third sign, the constant tests and challenges. If you're a chosen one, you've probably noticed that life doesn't let you coast. Just when you think you've figured something out, another challenge appears, sometimes out of nowhere. 
And these challenges aren't just minor inconveniences. They are the kind of tests that push you to your limits, that force you to question everything you thought you knew. But here's what you need to understand these tests are not designed to break you. They are designed to reveal your strength. The most powerful chosen ones are put through the most intense challenges because they are being prepared for the most significant missions. Think of every challenge you faced as a spiritual initiation. With each one, you're being refined, strengthened, and elevated to a higher level of consciousness. So the next time you find yourself in the middle of a storm, instead of asking, why is this happening to me? Start asking, what is this preparing me for? Because I promise you, each test is a stepping stone to something greater. But let's not ignore the emotional toll these challenges can take. The fourth sign of a powerful chosen one is emotional depth. You feel things more deeply than most. You experience highs and lows in ways that others may never understand. But that's because your emotional capacity is a gift. It allows you to connect with others on a soul level, to feel the pain and joy of the collective in a way that few can. This emotional depth is what makes you an empath, a healer, a guide. But it's also what makes your journey so intense. You're not just living for yourself, you're living for something much bigger. Have you ever found yourself absorbing the emotions of others, feeling overwhelmed by the energy around you? That's because you're a vessel for divine energy. And part of your mission is to transmute the lower energies of the world into something higher. But here's the thing, you can't do that if you're constantly drained. So you must learn to protect your energy. You must learn to set boundaries, not just with people, but with the energies you allow into your space. This isn't about closing yourself off. It's about recognizing that your energy is sacred and not everyone is meant to have access to it. which leads us to the final sign, the undeniable sense of purpose. Chosen ones are driven by something deeper, something beyond the material world. While others may chase after money, status, or fame, you are motivated by a calling that you can't quite put into words. It's a pull, a knowing deep in your soul that you are here for something more. And that knowing is what keeps you going, even when the road is rough, even when the challenges seem insurmountable. But here's the deeper question. Are you ready to fully embrace that purpose? Because once you do, there's no going back. Once you step into your power as a chosen one, everything changes. You will no longer be able to hide from your greatness. You will no longer be able to shrink to make others comfortable. You will have to own the fullness of who you are and that can be both exhilarating and terrifying at the same time. And this is where the real journey begins. Once you recognize that you are a chosen one and you accept that undeniable sense of purpose, everything in your life starts to shift. The world around you will respond to this newfound energy and people will begin to treat you differently. Some will be drawn to you inspired by your light, while others may feel threatened by it. This is the reality of stepping into your power It attracts both admiration and resistance. The second part of this journey and the next step in embracing your role as a chosen one is to understand that not everyone will be happy for you. This brings us to the next sign opposition from unexpected places. You see, when you begin to rise in your power, when you start walking confidently in your purpose, the people around you may start to reveal their true colors. Some who you thought were friends, even family members, might suddenly seem distant, critical, or even envious. They may not even realize why they feel this way, but on a deeper level, your growth challenges their sense of comfort. Have you ever noticed that when you begin to improve yourself, some people around you suddenly become uncomfortable? 
It's not because they don't care about you, but because your transformation forces them to confront their own stagnation. When you rise, it reminds them of all the ways they haven't, and that can create discomfort. But here's the key thing you must remember this opposition isn't about you. It's about them, and how they respond to your growth is not your responsibility. But this realization leads to another important point boundaries. As a chosen one, you are here to shine, to elevate, to bring something unique into the world. But that doesn't mean you owe everyone your energy. This is one of the hardest lessons for chosen ones to learn, especially if you've always been a giver, someone who wants to help others. But the reality is, not everyone is meant to have access to your energy. And that's okay. Setting boundaries isn't about shutting people out, it's about protecting your space so that you can serve your highest purpose without being drained by the negativity or insecurities of others. Now, I want you to ask yourself where in your life have you been letting people drain your energy? Where have you been saying yes when you should have been saying no? And most importantly, why have you allowed this to continue? Because let's be honest, sometimes it's easier to stay in toxic situations than to confront them. But as a chosen one, you don't have the luxury of avoiding these hard truths. If you want to step fully into your purpose, you must be willing to do the inner work to confront the ways in which you've been giving away your power. And here's where things get really deep. The truth is, most chosen ones have spent a large part of their lives trying to fit in, trying to make others comfortable, and trying to downplay their gifts so as not to stand out too much. But that's not what you're here to do. You weren't chosen to blend in. You were chosen to stand out, to disrupt, to challenge the norms, and to bring a higher level of consciousness into the world. And that can be a lonely path at times. But loneliness doesn't mean you're alone. In fact, this feeling of being set apart is another sign of your chosenness. It's a signal that you are being prepared for something greater. And while others may not understand your journey, that's not for them to understand. It's for you to live out with full conviction and trust in the divine path that has been laid before you. So, let me ask you, are you ready to stop apologizing for your greatness? Are you ready to step out of the shadows and into the fullness of who you are? Because the moment you decide to stop hiding, everything will change. You will begin to attract the people, opportunities, and experiences that are aligned with your highest purpose. But it all starts with a decision, a decision to stop playing small. This is where the magic happens. When you fully embrace your identity as a chosen one, you stop worrying about what others think of you. You stop seeking external validation because you realize that your worth doesn't come from the opinions of others. It comes from within. It comes from your connection to the divine, to the source of all creation. And here's the profound truth when you stop needing others to approve of you you become unstoppable. Your energy shifts. You no longer seek permission to be great. You simply are. And that kind of energy is magnetic. It draws the right people into your life and it naturally repels those who aren't meant to be there. But here's the question that only you can answer. Are you ready to be that powerful? Are you prepared for the responsibility that comes with being a chosen one? Because make no mistake, this path is not for the faint of heart. It requires you to be fearless, to stand in your truth, even when the world around you tries to tell you otherwise. But the rewards of walking this path are immeasurable. It's not about material success or superficial accolades. It's about living a life of purpose, a life that impacts the world in ways you may never fully comprehend. 
And as you continue this journey, there's one thing you must remember above all else, the power you hold as a chosen one isn't just for you. It's meant to ripple out into the world, touching the lives of others, inspiring them to awaken to their own potential. That's the ultimate purpose of being chosen to be a beacon of light in a world that can often feel dark and confusing. But here's where things get challenging. The very moment you start to fully step into your power, there will be forces that try to stop you. These forces can show up in many ways through people, circumstances, or even your own doubts and fears. But make no mistake, they're all designed to test you, to see if you're really committed to walking this path. And this is where many chosen ones stumble. When the opposition becomes too much, they shrink back into the shadows, convinced that maybe they're not meant for greatness after all. But that's the trap. The moment you start doubting your power, the moment you allow fear to take over, you've handed your power over to forces that want to keep you small. So, let's talk about fear for a moment. Fear is one of the greatest obstacles that chosen ones face. It's the fear of being misunderstood, the fear of rejection, the fear of failure. But here's the thing, fear is just an illusion. It's a construct of the mind designed to keep you safe, but in reality, it only holds you back. The real question is how do you move past fear? How do you step into your power? even when fear is whispering in your ear that you're not good enough. The answer lies in faith, not just faith in a higher power, but faith in yourself. You have to believe with every fiber of your being that you were chosen for a reason. You have to trust that the divine wouldn't have given you these gifts, these abilities, these visions, if you weren't meant to use them. And when you move from a place of faith, Rather than fear, everything changes. Fear loses its grip on you. It becomes just a fleeting thought that you acknowledge but don't give power to. You begin to realize that the only thing standing between you and your destiny is your own mindset. But this is easier said than done. Moving from fear to faith requires inner work. It requires you to confront the parts of yourself that you've been avoiding. It requires you to look at your wounds, your insecurities, your doubts, and bring them to the light. And this is where many chosen ones falter. The inner work is hard. It's uncomfortable. It forces you to face the parts of yourself that you'd rather ignore. But it's also where the most growth happens. Because when you can confront your own shadows, when you can embrace the totality of who you are, the good, the bad, and the ugly, you become unstoppable. So let me ask you, are you willing to do the inner work? Are you willing to face the parts of yourself that you've been running from? Because this is where true power lies. Not in the external world, but in your ability to master your inner world. And once you've mastered your inner world, the external world begins to shift to reflect that mastery. But here's where things get really deep. Being chosen means that you are constantly evolving. You're never the same person from one day to the next because you're always growing, always expanding, always learning. And this can be disorienting for the people around you. They may not understand your journey. They may want you to stay the same to fit into the box that they've placed you in. But you're not here to fit into anyone's box. You're here to break free, to shatter the limitations that society has placed on you, and to create a new path, one that is uniquely yours. And this brings us to the next sign of being a chosen one isolation. Many chosen ones experience periods of isolation where they feel disconnected from the world from the people around them, and even from themselves. This can be incredibly lonely, but it's also necessary because it's in the isolation that you find clarity. 
It's in the stillness that you connect with your higher self, with the divine, and with your true purpose. But this isolation isn't meant to last forever. It's a phase, a period of incubation where you're being prepared for the next level of your journey. And when you emerge from this isolation, you're stronger, wiser, and more connected to your purpose than ever before. So, if you're currently in a period of isolation, don't despair. It's all part of the process. Trust that when the time is right, you will emerge and you will be ready to step fully into your power. Now, I want you to take a moment and reflect on where you are in your journey. Are you in a period of isolation? Are you facing opposition from the people around you? Are you battling fear and doubt? Whatever stage you're in, know that it's all part of the process. Every challenge you face is a stepping stone to your next level. Every obstacle is an opportunity for growth. And every setback is a setup for your comeback. So here's the big question. Are you ready to embrace your power? Are you ready to stop playing small, to stop dimming your light, and to step fully into your role as a chosen one? Because the world needs you. The world needs your gifts, your light, and your unique perspective. But only you can decide to step into that role. Only you can choose to embrace your power. And when you do, everything will change. The people who once doubted you will start to see you in a new light. The opportunities that seemed out of reach will suddenly become available and the fear that once held you back will be replaced with an unshakable sense of purpose. When you choose to embrace your power, the world will no longer feel like an adversary. Instead, it becomes a playground where your unique abilities, gifts, and presence can make a real impact. But this journey is not without its difficulties. One of the greatest challenges of stepping into your power as a chosen one is the constant push and pull between remaining authentic and navigating the expectations others have of you. As chosen ones, we are often misunderstood. People project their insecurities onto us, expecting us to conform to their version of reality. But here's the thing, the more you step into your power, the less you are defined by the expectations of others you become more rooted in your own truth. And that's when things get tricky. The world around you might start to resist your growth. People may accuse you of changing, becoming distant, or losing your way. But in reality, you're simply evolving. You're moving away from the version of yourself that others were comfortable with and stepping into a higher, more authentic version of yourself. This evolution is essential, but it can be incredibly isolating. It's hard when the people you thought would support you no longer resonate with the path you're walking. And the temptation to dim your light, to shrink yourself so that others can feel more comfortable, becomes very real. But here's the truth you were never meant to fit in. You were never meant to stay small so that others could feel comfortable around you. Your purpose is much greater than that. You are here to challenge the status quo, to disrupt the ordinary, and to elevate the consciousness of those around you. But how do you maintain this sense of purpose when the world pushes back? How do you keep your light shining brightly when others are trying to dim it? It comes down to one thing unwavering faith in yourself and the divine plan for your life. You have to trust that no matter what happens, you are on the right path. You have to believe that everything you are going through, the opposition, the isolation, the doubts is all part of the divine process that is shaping you into the person you are meant to be. But let's talk about the opposition for a moment. When you step into your power as a chosen one, the opposition is inevitable. 
It comes in many forms through people, circumstances, or even internal struggles. But one of the most challenging forms of opposition is when people who once supported you turn against you. Maybe they don't understand your journey. Maybe they're threatened by your growth. Maybe they feel left behind as you continue to evolve. Whatever the reason, it can be incredibly painful when people you care about no longer align with the person you are becoming. But here's the hard truth, not everyone is meant to go with you on this journey. Some people are only meant to be in your life for a season, and when that season ends, it's time to let go. This doesn't mean that you don't love them or that they didn't play an important role in your life. It simply means that your paths are diverging, and that's okay. It's part of the natural process of growth and evolution. The more you grow, the more you will attract people who are aligned with your new frequency, people who understand and support the higher version of yourself that you are stepping into. But here's where it gets really deep. The people who oppose you often serve as your greatest teachers. They show you where you still have work to do. They reveal the areas in your life where you still need to strengthen your boundaries or deepen your self-love. In many ways, the opposition is a blessing because it forces you to become even more rooted in your power. It pushes you to become more discerning about who you allow into your life and who you give your energy to. So, let me ask you, are you willing to let go of the people who no longer serve your highest good? Are you willing to release the relationships that are holding you back so that you can fully step into your power? This is one of the hardest parts of the journey, but it's also one of the most necessary. Because as long as you are holding on to people or situations that are out of alignment with your highest self, you are holding yourself back from your true potential. But here's the good news. Once you release what no longer serves you, you create space for what is truly meant for you. You open the door for new relationships, new opportunities, and new blessings to come into your life. And these new experiences will be so much more aligned with who you truly are. They will reflect the higher version of yourself that you are stepping into. This is the next stage of your journey as a chosen one releasing the old to make way for the new. It's not easy. It requires a lot of courage and faith. But it's also incredibly rewarding. Because when you are aligned with your true self, everything flows. Opportunities come to you effortlessly. Relationships feel more authentic and fulfilling. And life, in general, feels more meaningful. But let me ask you this, are you ready for that level of alignment? Are you prepared to let go of everything that is no longer in alignment with your highest good, even if it means stepping into the unknown? This is where the real test comes. It's easy to talk about letting go and embracing your power, but when it comes down to it, it takes an incredible amount of faith to actually do it. But here's the thing, once you take that leap of faith, once you let go of what no longer serves you, the universe will meet you halfway. Doors will open that you didn't even know existed. People will come into your life who support you in ways you never imagined. And most importantly, you will feel a deep sense of peace and fulfillment because you are finally living in alignment with your true self.